We don't understand grace even. It's confusing. It's confusing because we don't practice it. Right? Even marksmen. I mean, I'm telling you what, this new tool, we're going to have problems. Until I get used to it. It's all the wires. But marksmen, they have to practice. One of my favorite definitions for the word grace is unmerited favor. When we receive grace, whether from God or from human beings, we receive favor from them that we don't deserve. Hmm. Because of Jesus' sufferings, it proves that we don't deserve the grace. Let me open the Bible to show you God's grace this morning, to show you that God desires and is able to grant you His favor even though you don't deserve it. There are some here this morning that are saying, I don't deserve God. In Romans, Paul writes to each of us in our natural state. Turn to Romans chapter 1, verse 28. Romans chapter 1, verse 28. I thank God that He changes plans. Amen? I thank God that He leads in the right direction. Here's what it says in Romans chapter 1, verse 28. Furthermore, since they did not think it worthwhile to retain the knowledge of God, He gave them over to the deprived mind to do ought not what not to be done. Say that many times. <laughs> They've then come filled with every kind of wickedness, evil, greed, depravity. They're full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, malice. They're gossips, slanderers, God-haters, insolent, arrogant, boastful. They invent ways of doing evil. They disobey their parents. They're senseless, faithless, heartless, ruthless. Although they know God's righteous decree that those who do such things deserve death, that not only continue to do these very things, but also approve and practice them. Now the same author, Paul, writes just a few chapters later in chapter 5. So swing on over to chapter 5. Verse 6. I love this verse. When we were utterly helpless, Christ came at the right time and died for us sinners. Now, no one is likely to die for a good person, or someone might be willing to die for a person who is especially good, but God showed His great for love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. Amen. My friends, this is a mystery. We can't really understand this. Even Paul can't hide his amazement as he basically writes, what's up with that? I mean, most of us won't die for a good person, but look at what Jesus did. He died for us before we had a chance to accept Him. He died for us for knowing that we might even reject Him. He died for us when we were helpless to save ourselves and perhaps won't even accept the suffering He went through. And He still did it. Amen. He did it even if we, if, even if we knew we weren't going to say yes. He did it. He did it when we'll say, God, I hate you, and we'll spit on your face. He did it anyway. He did it anyways. He did it anyways. Whether we deserve it, whether we accept Him, whether we choose to or not, God, Jesus Christ, went to the grave to forgive you. <coughs> That's grace. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. You know why it doesn't make sense? Because it's not practiced. One of the reasons it's not practiced is because we don't know God. And if you don't know God, then you're not going to understand grace. Because it doesn't make any sense. Because somebody would rather walk into your face and slap you. Instead of saying, Here you go. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I practice this. I say I'm sorry if I never even had anything to do with any of it. I'm sorry you're hurting. I'm sorry you're having to go through that. I'm sorry there's, there's a situation that you're going through. It hurts and it hurts me. And it 
it has nothing to do with me. That's grace. That's grace. It's the thing that you don't even deserve. Well, they deserve a smack in the face. It's all love. And so love. Show them forgiveness. They don't deserve grace. Look at what they did. Look at what they're doing. Look at what they're doing with their lives. They're going against everything that God has to stand for. <laughs> Question. job to tell them that? Hmm. Now it's your love to show them grace. To show them grace. To show them grace. To practice grace. Because they're never going to find out grace unless you're living. Remember, we're the billboard. Right? You want to introduce someone to God. It's, a, it's an unfamiliar term. I want to get into that just a little bit here, just a minute. But you know the things I see here, I hear this from people. I hear this, and it, and it drives me bonkers. Bonkers. I'm sure my brother, he knows what I'm talking about. I hear people, I can't come to church. I can't commit my life to Jesus until I get my acts together. Yeah. Baloney. Somebody right now, somebody right now that's, 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 that needs to, to do some fidgeting. Somebody right now turns the chapter and the verse to where it says you have to get ready to come to Jesus. Right now, somebody get, get busy. Googlers, Google it. Joseph, you're a Googler, Google it. Google it, Instagram it, whatever, Facebook it. Put it out there. Ask Siri. No, don't ask Siri. <laughs> I don't understand that. No, you don't. But seriously, <coughs> where does it say you have to dress up, you have to get ready, you have to quit doing what you're doing? It says, come to Jesus. It says, come to me, all ye who are weak and heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. It says, cast all your cares upon me, for I care for you. It says, let me carry the yoke, and I'll carry the burden. Agent that one a little bit. But I didn't change it. The, the intent's there. But some of us want to change it. We want to reword it. We want to make it fancy. We want to make it fit. We want to make it feel good. <laughs> Funny story. Funny to be do you know how many stores I can actually go in to try something on? You know how many? Here in town? Zero. Zero. You know how many 10 minutes of the road? Zero. I have to go all the way here to my little friend. As soon as I walked in the door, Ooh, I think you're out. I'm 56 ways. And I think your arm stands about 39. And he says, we need to be able to come to We don't need skinny jeans. <laughs> <laughs> but no. He knew what I needed before he even needed it. There's somebody else that I know that knows what we needed before we did. It's the same person that's involved in sanctification. The same person that's involved in, in, in holiness. The same person that's involved in salvation. It's Jesus Christ, the Son, the Holy Spirit, God, all three in one. Amen. 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 Before you say yes, he's excited this morning. I'm, I'm fired up. I'm fired up. I'm fired up because I'm, I'm, I'm so sick and tired of, of us sitting around like we're going to bump on the wall thinking that we have no power and strength and, and thinking that the world's ending, the sky's falling and there's no chance and blah, 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 and everybody's going to heaven. I'm 
the sin of it. We have the strength and the power in Jesus Christ that paid the price when you're not even going to say yes, when you're not even going to say no, whether you choose it or not. He said, I am doing it anyways because if one does it, it's good enough. Amen. Because he would have died for one. Yes, he would. Church. Holiness. Holiness is not clean. It is dirty. Because people are dirty and people are broken and, and people are bruised and, and people are confused and people don't understand. But there's grace. There's grace. <laughs> Folks, they say, they say things like this. I mean, Paul lists all kinds of stuff about, about I mean, good. Did you listen to stuff he lists? I mean, sin and all of that stuff and unrighteousness and, and this and that and that. Let me, let me, let me think about this. Do you really believe that Jesus suffered all things He suffered? He endured a kind of agony. We know that He endured. And then He'll turn around and say, I won't grant you my grace because you smoke too much. I won't grant you my grace because you have a dirty mouth. I won't grant you my grace because you have a long, unpleasant sexual history. I won't grant you my grace because you used to drink too much. Maybe you're even doing it now. I won't grant you my grace because you question or you doubt too much. I grant you. I'm not going to grant you my grace because you don't come to church enough. You don't read the Bible enough. You don't pray enough. You're not tithing enough. I won't grant you grace because of all those sins and wounds and things that you have. You're disgusting. Get out of here. Can you ever imagine Jesus Christ saying that from the cross? No. Then why do we use it as an excuse? Amen. Why do we use it as an excuse? I'm too dirty. Or those people that were too wrong to me. Or <laughs> Seriously. Yeah, I'm fired up. I'm fired up because we have a God that saves, we have a God that sanctifies, we have a God that redeems, we have a Holy Spirit that's ready to pick you up, ready to strengthen you, ready to help you, correct you, power you, strengthen whatever you need. Amen. And we walk around powerless. And we walk around saying, well, it looks good, but it's a little loud. <laughs> Or, or I would have done it this way. Or I put this plant over here. Or we should sing more of this. Or we should sing less of this. You're preaching too long. You get too loud. You use too many facial expressions. And your body, wow, what do you do with that? I've heard it all. I've heard it all. Well, it's just entertainment. Well, put it this way. Jesus had to have a little chutzpah to him to keep attention. He, he had to have a little something interesting going on to keep the attention. Right? He had to. And I appreciated the testimony that said, we get ready for our job, but we don't get ready to come to church. Appreciate it. Because we should come ready to the church. <coughs> ready to worship. Not to say, okay, God, what can you give me? Amen. Did you know, I know some people that God could be standing right there blowing in their ear. And they wouldn't get blessed for nothing. God, help us! Amen. God, help us! God, help us if you were carrying something this morning that Jesus said, lay it right here. <coughs> God, help you this morning if you're not giving grace to somebody that deserves grace. Well, I don't understand them. They should be diacted in that way. They're all fishy. <coughs> Where's grace? Where's grace? Grace, where's it at? We don't have grace because we don't practice it. We don't practice it.
is because we don't know God. Because if you knew God and were spending time with God, then you know what grace looks like. The reason it's unfamiliar is because we don't understand it. And something that's understand, something that, that, that we don't understand, it's strange. And it's a stranger. Stranger danger. I'm not taking away from that. Our kids need to do, need to know that there are people out there that, that are going to hurt them. They need to know that. I'm not making fun of that. But when something's strange, we do this. That's strange. It's different. <coughs> it's strange and different because you don't have a relationship. You don't know it. You don't understand it. So it's strange. You know how you can make something unstrange? Getting to know it. The only stranger is out there is because you haven't got to know them yet. But when you get to know them, and you spend some time with them, and you build that relationship with them, then you can share the grace that God has given you, and then they're not a stranger anymore. Amen? I mean, I'm, I'm, this is real. This is real stuff. We don't understand grace. It's a mystery to us. Because it's strange. People are strange. That idea is strange. Isaiah chapter 55 verse 8 says, I don't think the way you think. The way you work is the way I work. That's what God says. For as the sky soars high above, so I look to suppress the way you work. And the way I think is beyond the way you think. God's language is the language of grace. God is in the business of extending His favor, even though we don't deserve it. God is concerned with our fairness in the way we are. Grace is strange because there's absolutely nothing fair about it. Think of it, church. This is for all of us. Yes, they're strange. They're strange. But God's grace is for them too. Amen. And the only reason they're strange is because you haven't took the time to get to know them. And that doesn't mean you accept. And it doesn't mean you rationalize. And it doesn't mean that, that, that you coat things over and make everything cushy and bed of roses. But it does mean that there's grace. Because none of us deserve it. None of us deserve it. Amen. But Jesus said, Something happened last week. It was so cool. It was so cool. And if you haven't joined us on Sunday night yet, maybe you say, oh, we're not in the church building and I don't know where they're going and, and things like this. It's really easy next week. Next week, next Sunday night, 6.30, put it right here, 6.30, William and Darcy's house. It's really easy to go to. Let me tell you why. This is how you can do it right now. You in the parking lot, okay? You're right there. You take a right. You go to the sign that says BMX. You make a sharp left. You wait till the park is right there, and then there are two houses down. Boom! <coughs> Can't get easier than that. Six thirty. Hot dogs will be on the grill. You bring the chips or whatever else you want to bring. That potato salad is really. But what's really cool about it is guess what? Neighbors came over. Amen. They, neighbors came over. Yeah. They were church people. And they got to know us. And the gospel was spread. Mm -hmm. And guess what? If they never come back, the gospel was spread. 
the gospel was there for them to be able to take it. She came up afterwards and she told me and she said this. This is what she says. She says, that message was for me. That message was for me. Hey, guess what, church? Okay. Who's ready to have church at their house? We'll come. If you can't bring the hot dogs, I'll bring them. You need me to make a taste of it, I'll do that too. Just come, just make your house open. We're going to be there. And guess what? That's how the early church started. Amen. That's how the church now is going to continue to grow. Getting out of these four walls and getting to where people need to be. And whether they come back on Sunday or whether they don't, the message was there. And some are saying, well, who are they? All you have to do, if you don't know who they are, go to Brian and Brenda's house, and they'll show you where they're at. They might even take you over there and let you introduce yourselves. Well, I don't know them. They're strange. Yeah, guess what? So are you. <laughs> oh, my goodness, the preacher said I was strange. I'm not coming back. Stuff like that happens to laugh. <coughs> Don't laugh. Because it happens. I'll get an email, somebody says, oh, he's that strange. And then we'll share it to Instagram and whatever else. Instagram's not going to tell you who God is. God will tell you who he is, but you've got to spend time with him. And yes, grace seems strange. But you need to practice it. And you need to live it. And the only way you're ever going to believe it, and every way you're ever going to live it, is if you know Jesus Christ. And if you live it, and if you're practicing. Church, I totally believe. I totally believe this with all my heart. Or I would not be standing here today. God has got a plan. I have, I have seen so many things of how it's happening and how it's working out. Things are happening that we don't even... We, we have so many opportunities. Opportunities. So many opportunities. There's something coming up and i got to find the flyer where I found it. Hopefully uh, it didn't get thrown away somewhere and I'll find it. But there's something coming up in the park on July 14th. That they just want us to have a booth. And just pray. And maybe even have some puppets or something. We can do that. Mm -hmm. We can go out there and just be a presence. Yes. So many things we can do. Well, I can't do this. Hmm. I wish she was here. Can't. Never. Did. A thing. Amen. Never did a thing. I can do all things. Through Christ, who strengthens me. Let's grab a hold of it, church. I can do all things through Christ, who strengthens me. God will never leave me, or He'll never forsake me. And there is nothing on the power of this earth that is greater than the power of God. Amen. And God's grace is sufficient. Yes. And He's all I need. And I'll give credit to all the songs that I just used. Because <laughs> everything's a song. <coughs> In my heart. It's true. In my heart, it rings a melody. There's no one, Jack. But seriously, church. I mean, I'm serious about it. What would it be like? What would it be like if grace... Was it strange? What would it be like if the guy across the street wasn't a stranger? What would it be like if we truly accepted God's grace? That's available right here, right now. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be bold enough to say this. What would it look like if we laid everything at the altar right now? Everything. Everything.
everything, all about, no matter what's going on, everything. What would it be like if we said yes to Jesus for the first time? Or maybe yes again. Amen. Or maybe sanctify. The gates of hell could not stand against it. Thank you, Den. You don't know Den. Den's gone to heaven. But thank you for that reminder. He'd stand up every Sunday. Every Sunday. The gates of hell cannot stand against it. Church, what would it be like if we said, hey, devil, get away instead of, uh oh, maybe he's right. What would it be like if we said, hey, devil, get away? Get away from my family, get away from my church, get away from my home, get away from my business, get away from my health. Hey, those that you are going through health problems, let me ask you a question. I'm being very bold here. But, oh, I think there's a word there. You know, does the word tell us that we're supposed to be boldly, go boldly before the Lord? Have you given your health to Jesus? I ain't really given it to him. I ain't really laid it down on the altar and said, okay, Lord, no matter whether you answer yes, no matter whether you answer no, no matter whether, whether the doctors say, hey, I don't understand how it was healed, but you lay your health down to Jesus, have you done Now it's time for us to act. I can't act for you. I don't have the strength. I don't have the time. I have no strength for myself. I woke up this morning and I was like, really? Is this the best we got? Is this it? And then I took a shower. And I was like, okay. Woo! Because let me tell you this. You want a hot shower that will melt your skin. You come to the parsonage and come into the, the pastor's bathroom, it'll melt your skin and shower. <laughs> it is hot. And Heather stands in there and she's just like, and I'm sitting there like, woo! Seriously. Hmm. God loves you this morning. It's time for you to apply. It's time for you to listen. It's time for us to make practice grace. We think about it, we wear it on our t-shirts, but do we practice it? Someone else? God bless you this morning. Father God, we thank you for this message. We thank you for the Lord. It springs eternal from you, God. Now I pray that you will rest, use the rest of this time for your work to be done. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. Would you just stand with me? Nobody's watching this part. It's turned off. I'm turning this off. So you don't have to feel well, everybody's watching it. If you heard from God this morning and He was speaking to you, would you just come?